All right, so here's a portfolio update with what I have with the uh, Quest Trade. So as you can see, my equity is now back up to 110. It's still below my cost, which is at least 120. But I mean, I think last week was almost 100K and at some point it dropped below 100K. So at least it's it's coming back up. Right now, total equity 110. As you can see, cash is 97. So there, it's really badly allocated. I mean, I should be investing cash because cash is losing value. But like I always mention, I just, I don't trust anything right now. Everything is close to all time highs. Although there has been a bit of a tech sell off, but I've got a few positions that are causing me a bit of a headache. So it's not allowing me to, I'm not, I'm not able to buy with confidence right now. So if I go look at all my accounts that I have with question, which is a margin, RSP, TFSA, and RESP. So if I start off with my margin account, you can see I've got in, in US, well, let's look at the individual columns. I've got 6,100 US cash, but I've got a market value of negative 14,000. That's what's causing my my equity to be a negative 8,000. 8, I think when this gets fixed, I think my portfolio would go back up above 120. And if I look at my positions, it's mostly I sell options in my margin account. So mostly naked puts or put spreads. And as you can see, the market value on most of them or some of them are, are pretty deep. So for example, Spotify here is the worst one here. So the market value on Spotify is 2,700 or negative 2,700 here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add the column market value. I don't have it added, but basically market value is the price, the current market price, the current price of the, the option. So yeah, market value, as you can see, it's the last column here that I just added. So market value uh, for Spotify is 2,700. So that adds up. And the problem is I did not collect, since I, I sell options, so I'm supposed to have collected these premiums, but I did not collect 2,800 because I, it, this was a rolled trade. I paid more than, I paid maybe, let's say 2,700. Here, let's go to orders, let's go to executions and then look up Spotify just to explain, just to explain the impact of market value. So it's not a week ago, it's at least a month ago. So you can see the last two trades here, I had to buy Spotify for 26.85. So I had to spend 2,685 and then I sold it for 2,885. So I got a net credit here of about $200. But on the, on the, uh, on my positions tab, it shows here that I've, it shows the 2,800 that was the last thing I collected, the last amount that I collected but it's not showing that I actually have to pay 2,600 to get this 2,800. But then it shows the actual price, the actual market value of the put option, which is 2,700. So that's why my cash doesn't match up to my market value. So my cash will always be much lower than my market value because my positions are in the money, or at least this one is in the money. So that's an example of why the market value is surpassing my cash amount in my margin account. And you've got Sumo here. So let's go one by one. So there, I remember uh, if you watched my video last week, I had a put spread on AI at 65.55 for uh, May 21st. So I had to manage it because AI, actually let's see what it's trading at right now. AI ended up closing at 61. Oh, that's not bad actually. I had a 65.55 put spread. So I would have been able to close it for $4. So that would have given me a $3 loss if I had just closed it. So regardless, I ended up rolling it to, as a naked put. So I rolled it as a 60 put for July 16. Now AI has a 40% margin requirement stock. I usually like to um, trade only 30% or lower in my margin account and TFSA. But for 40%, I mean an extra 10%, I felt it was okay. This one, takes about, let's see how much buying power it takes. So it's actually, um, it was in the money when I initially did the trade, but right now it's at the money. So it takes about 0.4 times 60. So it takes about 2,400 of maintenance excess. If I go to my balance, it takes about 2,400 maintenance excess from this line over here. So remember my maintenance excess dropped almost to 19 or 18 last week, and now it's back up to 25. And that's because some of these trades have gone up now. So that's good. So yeah, so I've got a naked put on AI for at a 60 put for July 16. So I just need this stock to stay above 60 by July 16. There is a problem though. It has earnings coming up. 
it has earnings June 2nd yeah so that's gonna that's gonna be dangerous I hope it doesn't drop after earnings because it's still a new stock so it could drop a lot after earnings and that would put me in trouble and it could also go go up hard it could jump jump up because I mean it has dropped a lot so I'm leaning more it might there's a better chance that it goes back up after earnings for the look at the last I don't know six months you can see it had a high of 52 week high of 183 so I think it has a better chance of jumping back up. So hopefully that happens. All right, so go, going back to my position positions, I still have a Beyond Meat put spread, 115, 110. For June 18, Beyond Meat is trading at 106. So I need Beyond Meat to be above 115 for me to win on this trade. So this was an earnings trade that failed and I rolled it to the keeping the same strikes I rolled it and I just uh, rolled it to the June 18 expiry so to give it more time and hopefully give a chance for beyond me to recover next year I've got curiosity stream so this was a naked put and I just had to roll it all the way to November so nothing changed on that one and then I've got an I've got two Etsy put spreads so the December one was an it was an earnings trade that I uh, that I uh, rolled before earnings Actually, no, this one, sorry, this one was rolled after earnings. So the, the December one, which has a 150, 140 strike, this one I rolled after earnings when Etsy dropped completely. After earnings here, if we look up the stock, Etsy dropped hard after earnings, last earnings, so maybe less, maybe a month ago. So yeah, probably around here. There you go. It was trading at 185 and it dropped all the way down to 155. I believe I had a 180, 175 put spread. So... Uh, I ended up uh, moving it to December and increasing the width of the strikes to 150, 140. And then I opened another one before earnings and that one also failed. But I rolled it before earnings was announced because it was too close to earnings. So the stock had already dropped to 185. So I rolled it uh, before earnings was announced. I was able to roll it with the same strikes for an extra credit. But this one's to June 18. And now if we look at where Etsy is at, yeah, it's at 167. So this one might still be in trouble. I've got, as you can see here, I've got 25 days to go. Okay. Okay, and now I've got HIMS. This was a, put, a naked put on HIMS. And uh, I'm sure you've noticed HIMS has gone up a lot this week, almost like 10% every day. And it's trading at 12.81. My naked put or my short strike is at, 17.5 so it still has a long way to go but i have until november and i've collected some credits while rolling this uh, position and waiting for the stock to recover and it's not taking that much buying power out of me i've got a lemonade uh, put spread so it was an 80 75 put spread i ended up rolling it to 75 70 from may 21st to june 18 i think i collected like 25 cent credit and I think it's out of the money, yeah. So Lemonade is at 78 right now. So yeah, just a matter of holding and waiting. Uh, I've got a now ServiceNow put spread. This one wasn't doing great. I think ServiceNow was trading at 430 at some point. I've got a 10 point wide put spread. So for me to win, the, the stock has to be above 470 by June 18. Uh, right now it's at 469, so pretty close. I collected $2 from this put spread, so as you can see, eight minus six here, so that's two dollars. Right now, the the put spread is worth a, much more than two dollars. Of course, I think it's worth almost four dollars. But I still have until June eighteen, and hopefully, it comes back up above uh, four seventy. Then I've got a pins naked put that I had played for earnings, and I had to roll a few times from 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 the from the earnings expiry to May twenty first, and now I went to July sixteen. Brought it slightly down to 67.5 strike. And yeah, so now I just have to wait for pins to come back up. And pins is at, Pinterest is at 60 and I've got a 67.5 strike. Next, I've got two put spreads on the queue. So this is part of the put spreads that I do every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, I closed one of them for a profit this week, but I still have the 305, 300. Right now, queue's at 327, but it has a June 14 expiry. And then I've got a um, 315, 310. So this one's less safe, but it has a June 7th expiry. So it expires in 14 days. Hopefully I can close this one quickly because I think I'm more worried about this one than, than the 305. 
and then I've got a root naked put so at a 17.5 strike and this one's this is terrible I mean roots at nine dollars so this is one of the trades I made when I was looking for stocks to trade and I was using market chameleon just to look for stocks with high volatility and yeah so this was one of them that I should not have done and yeah there you go now it's a it's a, it's a nine dollar stock and my short strike is 17.5 so I've got a long way the stock has to double for me to come out of this stock safely now I've got a snow put spread uh, this was an old trade that I had to roll a few times and I ended up rolling to December 17 to 220 210 right now snowflake is above 220 but because I've got a December expiry it's not closable yet so if I look up my uh, trade logs or yeah my spreadsheet just to see how much I how much I collected in total on this put spread so snowflake yeah I've got a total of dollar 30 that I collected on snowflake I think right now it's you can I can close it probably for two and then three I can close it for five dollars so I would lose about four dollars if I close it so it's not closable yet but at least at least it's out of the money but it's just a matter of waiting but I, I was just trying to save it instead of confirming the loss so I rolled it all the way to December Spotify was an earnings trade that I had when Spotify was trading at 290 and and then it dropped to below 260 impressively uh, so you can see right over here it was at 290 dropped below 260 so I had to roll it I rolled it to the following week for two at 257.5 and then it dropped even more I had to roll it again I ended up rolling it to the 250 strike for uh, uh, July and as you can see this this week it recovered a little bit it's at 230 so right now I'm 20 points in the money but at some point it was trading at 215 so or 214 so I was really really in trouble on this stock but yeah, so hopefully, hopefully it just conti it continues going up and it doesn't decide to drop back down. But yeah, and now and then I've got a spy put spread for June 16, 385. So that's that one's pretty safe. But I only collected 70 cents, so it's not it's closable. But with commissions, it's gonna eat up a lot of the profit. So I still have to hold on to it. But I, it was a good entry. It was definitely a good entry. It was June 16. So if I look up SPY here, June 16 entry. So we could do, uh, no, I said June 16, but it, June 16 is expiry. But the entry, I believe, was, uh, it should say here, yeah, May 19. All right, so let's look up the stock again. May 19, so I could, probably could do 15 days. So May 12, no, so it was around here, as you can see. Look at this entry right over here when SPY was dropped all the way to 406. That allowed me to go all the way to 385 as a short strike and still collect 70 cents on a five point five point wide uh, put spread. So not bad. And then I've got the sumo that I mentioned earlier. The stock is at 18.7. My short strike is 30, so it still has a long way to go for for me to recover from this trade. And I've got two contracts, sadly. And let's just see how much I collected from this. I collected a total of $3.56 of credit. So my break even really is about $26. So as long as Sumo comes back to $26 by November, I can come out of it break even. Would have been a waste of time and capital, but at least I don't confirm a loss. Then I've got a put spread on Teladoc. Obviously not the best entry because Teladoc's at 140. My put spread is at 150, 145, but I still have until June 18. Then I've got a Twitter naked put that I had for earnings. I brought, I was able to bring the strike down to 57.5. The stock is trading at 54.45. So that's that's not bad. It's not it's not too dangerous. I just have to wait till July for the stock to recover. Total credit on Twitter that I received by rolling is about so I've got a total credit of two dollars and seventeen cents. So my break even on Twitter is actually. 57.5 minus $2, so about $55. Yeah, so I'm not far from my break even, but I still have, I have to wait until July to be able to close it. And then finally, in my margin account, I've got a naked put on Wish that I, once again, had to roll. This one, I went all the way to December 17. So if I go to my spreadsheet just to see how much I collected on Wish, collected a total of $2.80. And Wish is trading at 9.32, so it's trading... So it has. This is another stock that has to double for me to recover. Um, I sold. I collected a total of almost three dollars. So my break even is about seventeen dollars. Yeah. So long ways to go. So that's my margin account right now, and that's the yeah. That's the issue with the negative market value and the negative equity. So now in my TFSA, 
I've got uh, I've got what fifteen thousand cash Canadian and almost thirty thousand US. But as you can see, buying power in Canadian is zero. That's because I'm using my TFSA as leverage to to trade in my margin account. So I don't even so although I might have I might have all that cash in the TFSA, but I I don't have all that buying power because I'm using part of it in my margin account. But in my the position that I have in my TFSA, I've, I bought some AMD when it dropped. It wasn't a good entry. I could have bought at a much lower price. I ended up buying at seventy six. If I was gonna scale in. So if it was going to continue dropping, I was going to buy some more and then end up having 100 shares. And then I was going to do out of the money covered calls on AMD every week. I've got some BABA shares that I bought a bit too high, 223. Uh, right now it's worth uh, trading at 211, so I'm down on these BABA, BABA shares. But I, um, I've got no problem buying some more if it continues to drop. I think below 205, I would buy some more. I've got a covered call on this back here that represents Mavenport. Uh, so it's up, the, the, the shares are up. So I just I just kept selling calls again, kept, I rolled the call. So let's look at the spreadsheet, GHVI, how much credit I received on this uh, covered call trade. So uh, initially it was a 15 cover, it was a 15 strike covered call, which it still is. And I collected an extra 55 cents by rolling it. So at some point, if I'm able to close the trade for $15, my profit would be the difference between $15 and $12, $15 and $12.15. So right now I'm just holding it and I've got no problem just rolling the, the, the call option until I can no longer roll it and just take the profit. I've got some gold ETF here, gold shares. Uh, average price of 169, it's at 176 right now. So showing a profit of $73. I've got a HIMS covered call here that I went all the way out to June 18, 12.5 strike. I sold it for 53 cents, but definitely if I had just waited an extra day, as you can see, I could have collected more. But yeah, HIMS just kept jumping every day, so that's good. Good and bad at the same time for me, because I didn't get the best premium, but good because the stock is recovering, so that's good. See, I bought it for 15.82, so I bought it too high. And at some point it was trading at nine dollars, but at least it's recovering, so that's good. Then finally, I've got an, a covered call on open, June eighteen. I it's a sort of an in the money at the money covered call, so I bought it at fourteen point seventy six, and I sold the fourteen call. So it's an in the money covered call because the strike is lower than my when what the stock is trading at, and I collected a dollar eighty one. So that puts my net entry at where's open over here, or did I forget to add open? I think it's a July or June. Yeah, it looks like I forgot to add open to my list. Okay, so I'm gonna have to add it. So if I go back to my quest trade, open is June. And then if I look at June 18 expiry, yeah, it looks like I forgot to add open. Okay, so I'm gonna have to add it to the list. So yeah, so basically I collected, uh, so it puts my, I think my net cost, let's go to orders executed, open right here. So my net cost is 12.95. My max selling price is 14 by June 18. So I would make a profit of a dollar if uh, open stays above $14 come June 18. And if it keeps dropping, well then I'll just keep rolling the call. And yeah, so that's it for my uh, TFSA. So in my RSP, I've got some covered calls. And as you can see, Rocket here, the call option expired worthless because it, it was a 23 strike. So now I'm gonna have to sell another call option on it. I won't be able to go to 23 strike because there's not going to be enough premium because the stock is trading at 17. So either I'll have to go further out in expiry, so maybe go all the way to August, or I'll have to bring the strike lower. Now my cost on Rocket, I don't know if it'll show here, RKT, yeah it's not showing, it's been over a month. I think my cost on Rocket is about $21, so what I could do is sell a call option at 21 strike. So that means my max selling price, if the stock goes above 21, would be $21. But my profit would be the premium that I collect on that 21 strike. But if it doesn't go above 21, well, then I made a good decision selling the 21 strike because I collected more premium than if I had sold the 23 strike. So that's one possibility for Rocket. Then I've got a bunch of covered calls here. Some of them were naked puts in my margin account that I just transferred over as a covered call to my RSP because they have a, a, a margin requirement of a 50%. So I didn't want to hold 50% margin requirement. 
stocks in my margin account because it's going to uh, affect the buying power and the capital efficiency. So I've got APXC, which is a SPAC, nothing to talk about, just terrible position. I've got FUBO, which isn't doing bad actually. So I bought it at 25. I initially sold, sold a cover call for $4 and now I rolled it and I sold another one for $1.13. Actually, let's look at orders executed. So Fubo, I collected an extra dollar by rolling the call option. So right now my cost on Fubo is $20 and the stock is trading at, uh, Fubo is trading at 20.29. So it's not a bad, I'm not in a bad place with Fubo. Then I've got Luminar here. I rolled down the strike. So initially I had a $30 strike. As you can see, I bought the stock for 29.5. I had a $30 strike and I had to, I rolled it down to 27.5 to go to June 18 to collect an extra 55 cents. So as long as Luminar doesn't go above 27.5 above uh, by June 18, I don't lose my shares at 27.5. I still keep the shares and I could sell some more calls, some more premiums, reducing my cost on this position. Then I've got OACB. This I'm just waiting to get rid of. This was a mistake, forget this. Uh, then I've got uh, RMO, another mistake. This was a naked put in my Margin account that I transferred over to my RSP as a covered call. And yeah, this stock is at 7.8. So yeah, initially I think my naked put was 15. It was a 15 strike. So uh, yeah, this one's doing pretty bad. So forget this. Got skills here, 20, 20 covered call. Not bad. I mean, I rolled it again, June 18, collected some more credit. It's not far off my cost. So it's, this one's similar to Fubo. It's not as bad. It's not bad. It's not doing bad. SNPR, this is bad, forget it. This is was a, this was a naked put as well in my margin that I transferred over to my RSP as a covered call. And as you can see, my short strike is 15 and the stock is at $10. So yeah, it's pretty far. And then finally, Virgin Galactic. So this was a, yeah, a covered call at a 22 strike. I just rolled it to June 18, but obviously I did not roll it at the best entry, at the best timing because I, I collected an extra 46 cents from rolling it, but uh, the next day the stock jumped 20%. So I got 42 cents for rolling from May 21st to June 18, my 23 strike. But if I just waited one day, I could have collected uh, $2. So big difference, could have collected $200 instead of $40 for if I just waited one day. But obviously I didn't know that it was gonna jump 20%, that's a thing, but. Yeah, whatever, I'll, just my luck. And then finally in my RESP, I bought some Bitcoin. I bought a Bitcoin ETF, only only 100 shares. And it only, basically it only cost me $600. Uh, so I bought it at 6.65, but I sold an out of the money call. So this, I'm being bullish here. I'm giving room for the stock to go up so that I can make some capital appreciation as well. So my capital appreciation would be from 6.65 to eight. That's if Bitcoin goes or this ETF goes above $8 by July 16. Plus I would get the profit of a dollar up from the call option that I sold. If it doesn't go above eight, well then I got this $1 for free and I get to do it again. I get to sell at a different strike, same strike, whatever, but I'll try to sell another call premium. So yeah, so that's a bit, I could have probably done 200 shares because it would have been $1,200. But yeah, uh, that's my Bitcoin trade here in my RESP. I've got uh, LI here. Uh, this is another covered call. Not not so bad. I mean, I bought it at 23, stocks at 20.49, and I just keep selling covered calls on it or rolling the call option, collecting more premiums until, uh, until the stock comes back up above my short strike. I brought my strike lower. It was at 23 strike. I brought it down to 22.5 just to collect some better premiums. I also have a shift technologies here. It was a covered call at a 10 strike, it expired worthless. So that's why right now you only see shares. So on Monday or on Tuesday, I'll be able to sell another call option. I'm not sure if I'll be able to sell a $10 strike because there won't be enough premiums because the stock dropped a lot. But we'll see, maybe I'll go to 7.5 strike or maybe I'll go to a 10 strike, but I'll have to pick a an August expiry or something. And then finally in my RSP, I've got Wish Cover Call, just some bad trades, just looking for things to trade and I just picked the wrong, I wasn't patient basically, it, this was a lack of patience. I bought Wish at 22.77, but I went for the October uh, expiry, 
collected seven dollars so my net cost on this is actually just fifteen dollars as you can see the covered call that i sold is completely profitable because wish is probably trading at nine dollars right now yeah so this one's completely down so if you compare my net cost of fifteen dollars i'm actually down six dollars on the stock instead of being down thirteen dollars on the stock because I, I was able to sell that call option so yeah so that's my portfolio update with uh, quest trade so if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below also check out the referral links below i've got a quest trade referral link here that will give you fifty dollars in free commissions if you open an account i've got my live trade alerts group where i send my option selling trades via whatsapp before i place my trades and that's 25 dollars a month I've got 10% off TurboTax if you didn't already file your tax return. I've got a CoinSquare referral. I've got a WealthSimple referral as well. I've got BorrowWell if you want to check your score for free, your credit score for free. This one I use all the time. I love it. I, use, I look at it every week and it actually helped me increase my credit score. I should probably make a video on this on how BorrowWell increased the, helped me increase my credit score. I've got an Amex referral here. 50, I think you get $50 if you use the referral link. And it's, a, it's an Amex uh, credit card that gives you 1.25% cash back on everything. And then I've got a bunch of other referral links if you that might interest you. So just check it out. All right, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.